Welcome to Psychology to Daf. We are in Gemara Beta Daf Dalad, and we're going to talk about exaggeration in rabbinic literature, and in particular, we're going to talk about uh, a section of the Zohar that Rav Yaakov Emden was very disturbed about that he felt was exaggerated. So the Gemara Nobud Aleph tells us that sometimes even the language of the Mishnah can be an exaggeration, and to emphasize a point. So the Gemara says uh, over here that one Tana said not only is the egg permitted, but even the shells. Now, of course, nobody's going to eat shells. And actually, the Gemara in Tamid on Chavtes Samad Aleph uh, catalogs instances where the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Mishnah chose to use exaggerated expressions. So today we're going to look at one exaggeration from the Zohar that, according to Rav Yaakov Emden, has been the cause of terrible damage and despair. But first we need to do a, a historical note. Rav Emden wrote a sefer called Mitpachas Hasvarim, which was a critical analysis of the language, content, and authorship of the Zohar. Now, the Zohar has been traditionally viewed as authored by the mystical Tana, Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, and is thought to have been passed down, perhaps first orally and then in written form, similar to the Mishnah. Modern historians and scholars believe it was likely to have been uh, largely authored by the 13th century mystic Moses de Leon. Factually speaking, there are linguistic features and words that appear in the Zohar that did not exist in the time of the Mishnah. For example, Rav Emden in Midpachas Sasvarim uh, explains that uh, chapter 3, you can look it up, he explains that the section um, in Kiseitse on Daf uh, Kuf Pe Aleph Amad Aleph in Raya Mehemna uses a word for shul that appears to be of Spanish origin and certainly is found nowhere in Shas, Yerushalmi, or Midrashim. Ultimately, Ravemden suggests that the Zohar has a mixture of authentic traditions that stem from antiquity but also includes many, many editions from different authors throughout the generations. Rav Emden says that though there is a core, authentic Zohar, no one is under any theological compunction to believe in its absolute validity and authenticity. You can look that up in Menpachas Hasforim, Chelek Beis, Perak Tes, Item Kuf Vav. While the Zohar certainly has become functionally and socially uh, part of the Jewish canon of sacred writings, According to Emden, it does not enjoy the status of being regarded as unquestionably sacred, and an inviolable, literal, exact tradition. No, it's not. It's not like the Mishnah and not like the Gemara. It certainly contains some core tradition in it, but every single word he does not say that you have to believe in. Now, with that introduction, let us look at what the Zohar has to say about the sin of male masturbation and being Moti Zerlevatala. Now, let me be clear, this is definitely regarded in rabbinic literature as a grave offense. Uh, you can look at Gemar Nida, Daf Yud Gimel Aleph. Yet, the Zohar has more to say than just that. In one of the most uh, strictest Zohars in regard to this, in Chelek Aleph, uh, Daf Kuf Yud Tes Amad Beis, the Zohar says that being Motsi Zerlevatala, wasting seed, is such a terrible sin. Number one, there is no sin for which repentance doesn't work for, except this. And two, there is no sin in which a person is banished from before the Shechina, except for this. Now, Rav Yaakov Emden reacts strongly to this. He says in Mitpachas Perik Dalad, uh, section Lamed Tes, and I'm paraphrasing mostly, this Zohar rules that there is no tshuva for this sin, and yet this sin is not even explicit in the Torah, nor is it liable for lashes. In fact, at times it's even permitted for medical halachic purposes. See, for example, the sugi on Yavamas on Daf Ein Vav and Aleph, when it's used in particular for some diagnostic test to make sure the person uh, is not a Khrushchevcha. That can be looked at in your leisure. Rev Emden wonders, how the three cardinal sins of idolatry, sexual immorality, and murder can somehow be less severe in repercussions than masturbation. Can it truly be that those sins are forgivable and still qualified to be accepted in front of the Shekhinah, but not someone who masturbates? 
Prevemden goes as far as to declare, even if God himself stated what is in this Zoharitic dictum, you do not have to accept this exaggeration. Revemden's point was not in any way to suggest masturbation wasn't sinful. However, he considered it damaging and inaccurate to assign such grave consequences to a sin when clearly one can repent from far greater sins. The Zohar's extreme condemnation of masturbation and its magnifying of the grave consequences led to a degree of unhealthy reactivity and guilt throughout the ages. Let us keep in mind, like Lashon Hara, sexual desires and occasional infractions in these areas are endemic to the human condition. The Gemara knows this well when it states in Bava Basra on Daf Kuf, Samachayam at Aleph, the majority of people succumb to sin with regard to theft, and a minority of people succumb to sin with regard to sexual matters, and everyone succumbs to sin with regard to Avak Lashon Hara.